Welcome to the We Are VIP podcast. Each week, your host, Casey Haston, Director of Recruiting at VIP, will bring you valuable insights from thought leaders, introduce you to incredible companies, and bring you tips for landing your dream job from our team of executive recruiters at VIP. And now, Casey Haston. Welcome to the We Are VIP podcast, a podcast devoted to adding value to your career or candidate search, brought to you by VIP. I'm your host, Casey Haston. I'm an executive recruiter, director of recruiting with VIP, and your all-around hiring guru. So today on the show, I'd like to welcome Trisha Ben, Chief Community Officer of the C-Suite Network, General Manager of the Hero Club, and award-winning business leader and international speaker. Her mission is to build a platform and community that accelerates the success of C-level executives, owners, investors, and influencers. Trisha helps empower great leaders to take their businesses to the next level. And we are so excited to have her here with us today. So thanks for joining us, Trisha. Much, Casey. I'm so thrilled to be here with you. I, you know what? After seeing you speak at at an event, I was like. She has to come on the show. You had so much energy and so much passion about what you do. And I just, I knew that our audience needed to hear your message. I'm, you know, the the day we met, I was sharing with you was one of the most incredible days and it really encapsulates. I just feel honored. I love the people I serve. I love what I do to help them accelerate their businesses because it's all about how we not only create success for ourselves and our immediate families and communities, but across the board and great businesses do that. And we're gonna talk about that today for sure. But first, I always like to share with our audience because I know you know this, how important networking is. Um, So how did we get connected? So it was Success North Dallas and I was made an honorary Texan that day. Yes, you were. Yes, and um, Success North Dallas, of course, was founded by Bill Wallace, and he asked me to speak to women in the C-suite, and I asked if I could add in, you know, uh, how we handle transformation through disruption, uh, because that's absolutely one of my favorite topics, and he said yes, but I'd also like you to share a little bit about your journey, and that was uh, actually the first time that I shared those stories that I, I shared in that speech that day, Casey, so um it was it was an incredible day and what an incredible day to get to meet you so i'm i'm so thrilled because that's how you make those connections and i know that's so much of what you advise and what you do in terms of making sure the right people are connecting um but that's what it's all about you find those great people and you stay connected and you make sure that you have great things happening as you continue your relationship moving forward Okay, so I've been to a lot of events lately and a lot of meetings, but I'm pretty sure this was you. Didn't you tell us the tractor story? I did. I did. Do you want to hear it again? Yeah, give us just a little real quick because I was like, what's going to happen? You know? (laughs) So, So what I was sharing is, you know, we constantly in our personal lives, in our business lives, are have this kind of urgency placed on us that we must boil the whole ocean right you can't you can't just make an effort to do one thing a little bit more you've got to focus on everything and that's just not physically or mentally possible so so what i was saying is just an inch at a time just just a little bit at a time and the story i shared uh, to illustrate that was the fact that i grew up on a farm and anyone who has anything to do with a farm absolutely relates with this. You do whatever is needed, you know, and you make yourself useful. So with my father and being the eldest, I was doing everything. You name it, plumbing, um, roofing, uh, splitting wood, uh, gardening. I mean, literally anything ca- taking care of the animals, of course. I mean, anything that needs to be done, you're doing. And so this carries forward your entire life. So to this day, whenever I visit my father, he'll say, okay, we're going to do this and away I go. So I went there right after I'd had my first child and my husband who is six foot seven was holding the baby all in. My father said, of course, I've got a laneway to level, let's get going. And, um, and so of course, I know that I'm gonna be driving the tractor. My husband has no clue. And so we get in the enormous tractor. And of course, I am in the driver's seat. My father is just to the right of me. My husband's behind us with the baby. And we go out of the driveway of my father's home and up the lane, up the road 
to get to the conservation area where he wants to level the laneway. And along the way, there's a six to nine foot ditch. And so what is happening is I'm slowly moving over, moving over, moving over. And my husband suddenly yells, stop, stop the tractor. And he, <laughs> I stop the tractor and he says, that's it, I'm out of here. My, you know, the two of you can carry on, but I'm taking the baby back to the house and, um, and you know, she's going to safety kind of thing. <laughs> and, uh, and so I, you know, I let him out and I carried on. And, and what I said was, my husband couldn't see, but this has been something that was just absolutely embedded in my entire psyche of my life. My father was going like this. So he didn't need to say a word. It just meant move over an inch, move over an inch. And so I didn't have to worry about the six to nine foot ditch, never even crossed my mind. All I had to do was move an inch. And of course, we went up the road, we straightened out the, the and flattened the uh, conservation laneway, came back safe and sound to, of course, uh, my husband and daughter and, <laughs> and so on. So anyway, it's, it's, it's just a story about how you build that trust, you align on a mission, and you don't worry about all of the challenges, all of the risks. What you worry about is just that relationship that says, okay, over another inch, over another inch. And um, and that's what great teams do. That's what great leaders inspire. I absolutely love that story. And I think I got us a little off track, but I would just remember that. And I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that one. So I definitely wanted to kind of highlight that one because I, it's just such an important message. And I think it really speaks to those that just go, 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 go. And if yeah. you're not careful, you might fall in the ditch. Just, just a little bit, just move over a little bit. And so frequently uh, we hear, and I know you've heard this a thousand times and probably more. What if I take the wrong step? Yes. Right. In my career journey. Oh my goodness. Take the step. Yeah. You know, it's the next step that gets you to the next step. And you know, nobody's going to die. <laughs> so <Hopefully>. so <laughs> take that step. And, and if that's a step that says, okay, wait a second, I want to go somewhere else. You're never going to know where that next place is without taking that first step. So take the step and then you go from there. You know, it's, th there's, there's no concern about a step that takes you somewhere where you decide, huh, this isn't what I want to do, but now the doors are open for these other things that wouldn't have been possible without that step. You know, that is such a true story. And if I may, I want to share just a real anecdote real quick of a personal anecdote about mm. when I joined VIP. And one of the great things, um, I wasn't looking to make a move. I had no idea I wanted mm. to make a move and a career change. It wasn't a career change, but you know, I had a non-compete. I'm in sales, right? That's not right. fun when you have golden handcuffs. And so when I went to interview with VIP, um, cause one of my friends was working there and I was like, okay, fine. I'll interview with them. One of the important questions that they asked me is what do you want to do? Not, this is what we want you to do. What do you want to do? And when I told them what I wanted to do, they're like, okay, come do it here. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I was just kidding. I'm not serious, but here's what I wanted to share. What I told them I wanted to do, mm -hmm. I'm not doing any of it now. Completely <laughs> different, but you're mm -hmm. right. That opened that door so that I could be here today doing a podcast, doing executive coaching, doing all the things that I didn't even know that I wanted to do, but I had yes. someone there guiding and molding me, but I had to take that step. Absolutely. You know, taking the step, what is the risk in taking a step? You know, and I think through COVID, it's been such a tremendous time to learn and understand. You, you, you take the step. And I think the psyche around fear and mistakes is just completely um uh, just just absolutely false mm -hmm. i think it's nonsense you've heard it a million times so have i uh everybody listening has it's a fail fast nonsense and i'd use stronger words uh, if it was just you and i speaking <laughs> um basically you know like it, it's nonsense you don't mm -hmm. fail fast you succeed fast and the way you succeed is you pilot you test you take that step and you figure out hmm what did I like in that? What didn't I like in that? What worked? What didn't work? And then drop what didn't work. It's not a failure. It's the step you had to take to get to that information. And then you take the next step. And whatever did work, you fill that in and you use that like crazy. You know, and I love to tell people too, and I was a big proponent of fail forward, you know, and all that kind of stuff for a long time. And, but if you're, if, but if you're moving forward, if you're pushing the needle, are you really failing? And so one of the things I like to tell my clients is give yourself grace. 
it's okay. Absolutely. You know, if I make a mistake now, I'm like, hey, I did that. But now I'm going to try yeah, something else. And help me. Yeah. Help me. Did I make a mistake? Is there something else I could have done, could have said? What could I do? And, and I, yeah, so I'm, I'm completely with you, Casey. And that word grace is such a beautiful word. Mm -hmm. It's one of my very favorite words in the language because grace is something we give to others that is so appreciated. And especially when things are challenging. And then for ourselves, yes. you know, we have to give ourselves grace. Nobody made us perfect. Yep. You know, and and if that was the goal, ugh, how boring would that be? <laughs> you know, we, we're not perfect and nor should we ever seek it. It's, it's a, it's a, to me, just a misnomer of life. It's nonsense. What you're doing is, okay, this is the best I can do to the outcome I want to see, you know, and now the next step. Now yep. that's the best I can do. And that's the best I can do. And then that makes you really appreciate everyone around you. That's part of that mission that you're on to deliver what it is you want to deliver with your, you know, the, all of the resources and energy and your lifetime that you're spending doing what you do. Absolutely. You know, and I love how we just jumped into this conversation without even giving any background. So tell us a little bit about your career journey and what brought you to do what you do today. So speaking of completely unplanned, uh, you know, so um, my I, I actually did not declare my major until my third year of university. So that's one thing I took absolutely everything. But I ended up doing my degrees, both of my degrees in sociology and anthropology. And then for whatever reasons, I lived in England in between my degrees. I worked in a couple of different businesses. And when I graduated from my master's program, I actually ended up going into market research and consulting, which you might think, okay, well, that fits from a sociology and anthropology perspective. Why do people do what they do? But what I found out is I love business. I love building great teams, delivering great services and products that have you know, impact, you know, because everybody needs help. They've got a goal that they need to succeed against and they need partners, collaborators, suppliers, um, and, and everybody in a community that they serve to succeed with them, to support them in that success. And so I just loved all of that. So my experience ended up being that I started out in market research and public affairs consulting, very quickly realized I love building business and, and building out client relationships and so on, teams. And so my whole history, I came from three enterprise uh, sized organizations, built businesses, integrated businesses, um, and, and built great teams that were just absolutely Phenomenal and and truly a joy because the fact of the matter is we all need purpose and meaning in our lives and mm. our work is so important. You know, every day you should be excited about who you work with, what you're delivering on and the impact you can have with your life, your lifetime. You know, and I, I don't know. We might get a do over. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> but I do know, you know, if we get today, we get today. And if you wake up tomorrow, we get tomorrow. And and that's really exciting because every single person matters on a great team and that creates great businesses that are able to be agile and and really truly create the kind of success you want to see through really challenging times like what we're going through and have gone through for the last couple of years so it's um it's something that um, truly has motivated me through my whole career. I've also been across the border uh, my whole adult life. So I was Canadian born and became an American citizen last year. And a Texan. Uh, honorary Texan <laughs> as of this year. Uh, so, and I was screeched in in Newfoundland. So anyone from the uh, East Coast or Canada maybe would know about being screeched in in, uh, in Newfoundland. Um, and that's quite an experience. Uh, which apparently makes you an honorary Newfoundlander, um, and I have ancestors from there, so I'll I'll uh, I'll do a little call out there. And then in my my last role, I was uh, a chief marketing officer inside of a three billion dollar uh, company, a holding company of agencies, and I had P and L responsibilities for one of our businesses out of New York. So um, in that role, I was looking for uh, U.S. decision makers, you know, any business decision makers. And my business partner now, our founder of C-Suite Network, Jeffrey Hazlett, had come and spoken at my National Association Conference. Now, I sat on the board and I was the treasurer of the association at the time, just the year before I took on the chief marketing role. And, um, and so I reached out to him and said, you know, did you do that thing you were talking about, that C-Suite Network thing? And ironically, so again, you know, we were talking about keeping in touch with people that mm -hmm. you meet uh, and, and the various ways that you meet people. 
um, I reached out and I said, you know, did you do that C-suite network thing? And I ended up being the first paying sponsor of C-suite network. And so that was about eight and a half years ago. Um, five and a half years ago, I came on team and, uh, and nearly five years ago now, I became a partner in the business. So I run the business of C-suite network and, um, and that's just been absolutely tremendous. And I'm, I'm happy to talk more about that, but um, essentially from a career perspective, I would never have mapped the career uh, that I have um, and the way that I've developed through business, but I certainly wouldn't do it any other way. It's been, um, it's, it's just been absolutely incredible. And I'm a true believer, whatever your role is, whatever you're exceptional at, you find the right team and the right mission. And you really have that scenario of you're not doing a day of work in your life. You're truly <sighs> delivering, you know, and, and creating meaning and purpose and impact. You are like my soul sister. That is my motto is that I don't I, I don't work a day in my life because I, I found my passion. And so I literally it's Monday comes and I'm like, let's go. You know, yes. and Friday comes and I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And, and you wake up really tired after some kind of exhausting scenario, right? Your yeah. flight doesn't come in, whatever. You get on the first call and you're smiling from ear to ear yes. and, and you can't wait. You know? like Absolutely. Just, Absolutely. Here we go. I love it. Yeah. I, I was just on the phone with a new connection the other day that was introduced to me by Bill Wallace. <laughs> Imagine that. And we were on the phone and I was, she, we were just talking and I was just like, you know, this is it. I get to talk to people like you all day long and I love yes. it. I love it. We are soul sisters. I say that every day as well. And there's not a day that I'm not grateful for that. And yeah. I think that's another thing is just that mindset is so important. And to every day think to what are your conditions of satisfaction? What gives you that feeling every day? Yes. And it shouldn't be conditional on where you are. Nope. So if, you know, if it's, I have to get to the gym every day, you can't get to the gym every day. So, so, so what is it that really is your condition of satisfaction? Maybe it's some form of activity or you need to get outside or, you know, something, something that you can do no matter where you are in any day. And then you can think to what are those other conditions of satisfaction, but none of them should be conditional. And I think, you know, that's what you're speaking of, Casey, mm -hmm. is you're, you're getting that joy wherever you are and that sense of connection that really is what makes you satisfied in life every day. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I love what you just said. And there's a great book if you're interested. It's called The Inner Work. Okay. And it's, I, I'm about to start reading it again. And I've dog-eared okay. and highlighted and made notes. It's ridiculous. But that's how I read. I like absorb. But it's really mm -hmm. good because I really feel like if we get our inner landscape cleaned up and get all the weeds pulled, then yeah. you're not going to have that those moments like i mean i can walk in and somebody can say something ugly to me and i'm gonna be like okay <laughs> that's what you think yeah you know it's it does it's not, not mine me. to hold yeah exactly yeah. and i actually wrote that down in my journal the other day is you know do not own other people's emotions and that includes yeah. if they're mad at you you know just because you're mad at me doesn't mean i have to be mad yeah and well and and frankly that person has a right to be mad at you yeah. <laughs> you know yeah um that's that that's their right to feel what they want to feel um, so I'm, I'm absolutely with you. You cannot own other people's business yep. and, um, and, and how we treat ourselves and the tapes we play in our own head, uh, just so, so important. Um, and, th and that's why, again, I think when you have a service mentality, when you really are about seeing success around you and you know that you can be, and, and I love Sheryl Sandberg's quote, uh, when you're asked to join the rocket ship, you don't ask which seat you're on is a paraphrase of it. Um, and and I just love that, you know, like if you can if you can be that, you know, little passenger that's done something to see incredible success for somebody that is amazing. Right. And and the fact of the matter is, the more you see other success, the more they see yours. Yeah. And um, and and then that becomes success in and of itself, but it breathes the financial success that businesses need to succeed and, and create larger impact. And, um, and, and we need to do that. We can't be martyrs in business. That's the one rule. We've got to figure out profitable business models. Right. And I think that's why I love business so much because it's so easy when you have great people aligned on a mission and you're, and you know, you're having that great impact. Okay. So you said something earlier about keeping up with Jeffrey Hazlitt, right? And I think this is such an incredible, you know, just example of networking and where it can take you. So 
Mm-hmm. How crucial is networking for job seekers and or young professionals just starting out? I mean, that that's an epic example that you just gave. Uh, it is, you know, so I am a huge believer in connection. Ironically, we have network in our, our name, <laughs> so <laughs> C-Suite Network, but the way that people typically do it, I don't, I don't like. Okay. Um, so for me, it's truly about connection and that is authentic to me. So, so I would say step one, be authentic in who you are, where you are, and really engaging with people. I can collect a thousand business cards at a large event, no problem. But the fact of the matter is, I'm not going to know who they were. Mm-hmm. The biggest value to me is those two to five people, depending on how long the event is. But those two to five people where you'd say, I need to reconnect, you know, and if I call this person, they're going to remember who I am and I'm going to ask them something and they'll get back to me. And and so those those real connections, I think, are so important, so valuable. And it also is critical in our lives. If you're if you close yourself off and you don't bring in the new, then you're there, you're losing those opportunities as well. So I think there's a really authentic way to constantly be connecting with real people. And the more you do that, the more you reveal who you are so that they know to connect with you as well. I love every, I swear to God, I think we were separated at birth. <laughs> Cause one of my, I'm really big on internal rules and you know, how I show up and how I make decisions, but also core values. And my number one core value is authenticity. It's, it's so important. And if you feel like you have to lie about who you are, you're in the wrong place. Yes. Move on, move on, move on. And the other thing is to hold to what is right for you, you know, um, and and that's something where, you know, great leadership is about that, uh, that ability to be authentic about who you are, which is something we grow into, mm-hmm. right? Every day we understand better and better who we are, what it means, the gifts we have to be able to give, the impact we can have, who we work well with, and where we want to see those um uh, the the attribution of our resources and 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 time being the most valuable, of course. Um, so you know, in the hero leadership, and you mentioned I lead the Hero Club of C Suite Network. It's for our CEOs, founders, and investors, and every one of us is pledged to lead with integrity, transparency, mm. give back to our communities, share in our success. And the fact of the matter is that whole that connection and um, understanding of what great great leadership is, and you mentioned values, Casey. I just I, I I love that. And when you have that, and you hold on to what that is for you, you can have impact no matter where you are. And I think there are a lot of people who feel very beaten down by sort of the machine type of scenarios. And in large organizations, that can be mm-hmm. really um, a heavy weight. But no matter where you are, you can make a huge difference. And I just never accepted those things. I just never did. I always <laughs> did things differently. You would always see a complete difference in where my group was sitting or where our, you know, our area was, what we did. Um, and I'm so proud of that because nobody has the right to take away from you who you are and your ability to have incredible impact. I don't care if you're the most junior person on the team or the senior most person, that gift is something that each and every single person on the team should be delivering and have the opportunity to deliver. I I think that's beautiful, you know? And I think one thing for me, kind of going along that same path that I think would help others is that I, kind of what we said earlier, you know, I quit trying to impress people and that's my authenticity. If when I show yes. up, you're going to see the same Casey every single place I show up. I'm not showing up different for work. I'm not showing up different for news interviews. I'm going to show up the same. And I it's not that I don't care if you like me. It's if you like me, you will come into my circle of influence, right? And mm-hmm. and that's where you should be. But if you don't then you don't you don't belong in that circle. And I'm okay yes. with that. Well, and the thing is you start that that whole process of how you understand yourself better with time. I hit a point this year, earlier this year, where I realized, wait a second, if I'm not contributing value, I need to be out of here. Mm-hmm. I have very limited time and I need to do a lot with that time. So if I'm adding value and it's an important mission for whatever reasons, great. 
If I'm not adding value, I need to go and either I will excuse myself or you will excuse me. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but um, but that's that's a condition of satisfaction for me. I have to be adding value yes. or I need to be doing something else. And, and it makes it very simple. It's just a, it's it's like an acceptance thing, Casey, just like what you were saying. You know, uh, I am who I am. I know what I can deliver. And if that's value here, great. And if it's not great. <laughs> um I'm not even kidding you. You're not going to believe this when I tell you. Okay, so my number one internal rule, Mm -hmm. give value first. Beautiful. Yep. (laughs) But that's what you're doing. Absolutely. And and the fact of the matter is, and this is one of my conditions of satisfaction, is I want to reach for what's great, like my great, and I want to help everybody else and support everyone else around me to their great. And that value piece, you know, that that gets you out of your own skin and worrying mm-hmm. about your performance. It makes you focus on what are you trying to deliver to others. And man, it gets a lot simpler that way. Sure does. Okay, so tell me a little bit more about C-Suite. It must be an amazing adventure to sit there with all those CEOs and these people running these big companies. I mean, what is that like? Does your head explode? It's, you know, it's incredible. And I will say... We have such an authentic space around our entire community uh, that there isn't nonsense. It, it's it's you and I, <laughs> um, and and we all have our strengths, our weaknesses, our challenges that we're facing with our businesses. So whether you've had the wildest success at an enterprise-sized organization, um, or you're just starting out building your business from this from the ground up or you've stepped out into becoming a speaker, author, consultant, coach, you know, uh, a, a, an IP positioning, mm-hmm. um, all of it's the same. We're all people wanting to have great impact with our success. And so um, what I would say is I'm completely honored. And at the same time, there's absolutely the space of we're all real people having all the challenges that we have. So I'll frequently say, you know, we help and support our leaders from everything that's going on personally, <laughs> everything that's going on professionally, and how do they lead forward to move forward as quickly as possible. And then and then there are just incredible things that happen. So we, in our membership, we have executives, owners, investors, and influencers. So that's that's who we serve. And, um, and the platform is all about how that access that we provide through the C-suite platform accelerates their success And we have just four simple buckets. So it's networking and education, it's our media and distribution, it's our professional services and our marketplace. And those four simple buckets, (laughs) uh, which there's a lot to, you know, we have over 400 podcasters, we have 70 some odd TV hosts, um, and then our digital content, our social media content, we run over 300 virtual events a year, plus now we're going back into our in-person events. We used to do 120 plus a year all across North America. Um, so there's there's a lot, a lot to those buckets. Um, but um, uh, uh, simply the four buckets, those are all the things that we need to succeed in our businesses. I love it. I love it. So what is one piece of advice that you would give to someone just starting out in their career? So the one piece of advice I would give is never, ever underestimate the value you bring to the teams that you join. And I think that is just so important. Um, And certainly always being open to learning, growing, uh, creating success around you, right? So how do you see others succeed through what you're doing? That's critically important. Um, And understand that great businesses create great impact. And when you look at never stay, never be far away from the financials. That's mm. also critically important, <laughs> um, right? Because, because the rule of the game, you have to create a great profitable business model. The thing is, when you have that connection in terms of what is the mission, who are you serving? I don't care if you're making lipstick or, you know, you have the most critical cancer curing uh, medication. You need to be thinking to what is that impact? You're bringing joy to people that they can enjoy themselves, express themselves. You're bringing health to people, whatever that mission is. But but be focused on how do you create that great business model? How do you contribute to that? Even if you're the most junior person on the team, there are incredible things you can be doing. Just today, the newest 
leader I have on my team, uh, who just got out of college very, very recently, sent out a note to everybody saying, hey, I want to see your success. Is there anything I can be doing to support you? Here's a link. Just put in whatever it is that you're looking at for a project or something you need to, to do and let me know how I can help. You know, wow. um, she's having a tremendous impact. She'll be on our team. So, and then, and then finally, I'd say, be clear about your conditions of satisfaction and those will evolve with time. Come back to them, look at them. Are you doing what you need to do to make sure you're in the place you need to be to create the success around everyone else uh, or for everyone else that's around you? Beautiful. That is great advice. And I hope that our audience will go back and listen to that again, because there's a lot there for sure. So. We are almost out of time, but I will still make time for our VIP questions. Are you ready for those? Oh, right. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. If you were chosen to be one of the first colonists on Mars, what three things or people would you take with you? Okay. So these questions I find incredibly challenging because I love everybody, everything. It's, it's everything that makes people different and experiences different that I love. So the idea of only taking three things anywhere is like just catastrophic to me. Um, so first, I can't go to Mars because there's no sun, there's no forests, you know, like I, I need that in my life. Um, now, if you told me I needed to do that to save the people in my life, then I would. <laughs> so, so, uh, so there we go. And I'd have to have, you know, that in mind in terms of I really have a critical mission to save the people I love. And, um, and I just got an Apple Watch for uh for christmas oh nice so that's my that's my newest thing i'm i'm exercising every day and you know taking good care good for you okay well i will tell you you're not the first person to refuse to go to mars so it's okay <laughs> <laughs> not scared of it just i'd have to be really truly saving the earth and i'm definitely finished with having children which by the way is another critical piece of advice having children has nothing to do with your career <laughs> So true. So true. Another topic, but <laughs> well, maybe we'll to have put you it back. <laughs> okay. So my second question, and I'm very curious about this. What is one thing you do each morning to set your day up for success? So I'd actually say I start the night before. I was a competitive figure skater, um, uh, trained at the Canadian Figure Skating uh, Olympic Training Center in Canada for many years of my youth and uh, visualization. So mm. when I fall asleep, I'm thinking to what does a great day look like tomorrow? And that visualization is something I was taught back in those days, but I still do it. And it's wonderful, you know, just walking your mind through what does a great day look like tomorrow? And especially if you have something that you're nervous about or is going to be, you know, a lot of effort, what does that look like? What does it feel like? That The night before I met you, Casey, I walked through, I'm going to do this presentation. And I'm going to serve people. I'm going to give them some material that will be useful, helpful, make them laugh, make them enjoy and connect and really think too. maybe there's one or two things that are useful there for them to apply in terms of what they're working on or what they're challenged with at the time. So that visualization. And then in the morning, I drink a lot of coffee, as you might imagine. <laughs> and I'm and I'm mindful. You know, what does my day mm -hmm. look like? How do I make sure I'm connecting? And with my conditions of satisfaction, one of them is um, making sure I have real conversation. So I have, no matter what, I reserve the right, even with back-to-back -back the entire day, I reserve the right to have it, that my schedule interrupted for a real conversation like the one you and I are having um, and would have whether we were being recorded or not. <laughs> right. <laughs> I love that. I, especially the visualization piece. That's a, um, it's something that I use, a technique, but, and, and I use it through meditation. Um, I do mm -hmm. guided meditations, but it's so important to, but being specific, oops, to your day and, mm -hmm. you know, really being, in fact, I've got a big speech coming up next week. I'm going to do yep. that the night before. I've not done it the night oh, before. Yeah. I always do it you the morning feel of. in your body. What does it feel like yeah. when you know you really nailed it? People have enjoyed it. They've taken away something of value and your whole body feels it. It's, it's wonderful. Absolutely going to do that. Okay. My final question for you. If your life's work was being summarized in a news article, what would the headline be? I think it would be, though I reserve the right to come back at this question at some point, Casey. <laughs> but I think it would be great people, great business, great impact, great life. I love it. And there would be an exclamation mark at the end. I got to be clear about that because I love exclamation marks. Me too. Why not be excited and passionate about what we're doing? 
that I love that. And just so you know, another little synchronicity between us, like all of my emails, I have to go back and delete the exclamations because <laughs> I will literally put one at the end of every sentence. And I'm me like, too. I, 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 I'm just excited. And my, my, my team makes fun of me. Um, but it's, it's because, you know, genuinely I'm excited yes. about what we're doing. And um, in business, frequently we're taught, oh, you know, that's, you're not supposed to do that. Uh, you know what? Actually, business is just real people wanting to make mm -hmm. a difference. And, you know, we have a model where we can create great business and really enjoy what we do and create great impact. So, and you know all what? All the else? exclamations you want, Casey. And smiley faces. <laughs> <laughs> this this has been amazing. I have so enjoyed this conversation. I wish that we could just keep going forever. Unfortunately, I do have to wrap it up, but I do have one last thing to say to you. You are a VIP. Oh, thank you so much, Casey. I mean, you are the original and prototype of the VIP. Thank you so much. And thank you for what you do um, and the passion that you deliver it with. It's just absolutely incredible. And that's a wrap for today. Join us next week here on the We Are VIP podcast. We'd love to know how we can help you be a VIP. To find out more, log on to wearevip.com.